I learned a long time ago that the quickest, most effective way for me to learn a new topic or skill is to put it into practice. There is something about doing the thing I'm trying to learn that solidifies it way more than verbal instruction or slides ever could. For that reason, this video takes a brief break from the ServiceNow Fundamentals Learning Path to walk you through the process of setting up your very own instance of ServiceNow. You can then use that instance to practice hands-on everything we're learning in this series of videos on a journey to ServiceNow certification. Hey, it's Jeff Teese here from ServiceNowSimple.com where we help you understand the ins and outs of ServiceNow and we keep it simple the entire way. In this series of videos, we're working through the process of learning everything you need to know to become certified as a system administrator in ServiceNow. We would love for you to join us and ask that you hit the subscribe button so you'll get notifications as we add new videos to this series and the channel. You can look in the description box below for links to any of the resources we mention in this video. And with that, let's take a simplified look at gaining and setting up your very own ServiceNow personal developer instance. Let's talk briefly about what exactly a personal developer instance is, and then um, we're going to go through the process together of actually signing up for the developer program and gaining access to a personal developer instance of our very own. Uh, ServiceNow offers for free what they call a PDI or personal developer instance to any individuals who sign up as members of their developer program. We'll talk more about the developer program in a moment. Uh, but what a PDI is, it's a fully functional instance of ServiceNow that's intended to be used sort of as a sandbox environment uh, for developer type folks to experiment with the Now platform. Uh, it's created and intended specifically for learning, for exploring, and for experimenting against the platform in an environment where you can safely do that without interrupting uh, any type of activity that others uh, might be doing on, say, a development or, or a, a production instance. Uh, it is not intended for use um, in production in any way. In fact, that would be a violation of the developer program agreement. So. You can't, you can't take one of these and actually build and use it within your company, uh, but these are great tools for learning. Um, when you sign up and you gain your developer instance, that instance of ServiceNow will be yours forever, as long as you continue to use it. So uh, the, uh, the platform will kind of monitor the use, and if you let it sit idle and don't visit your instance for 10 days, um, the instance will actually be reclaimed and you, you, uh, you'll, have a, you'll have some hoops to jump through if you want to get it back. Um, if you want to uh, continue to use it, um, you can have it for as long as, as you keep it active. So uh, you can keep it active simply by signing into the developer uh, portal. Um, that'll be enough for it to, to mark as, okay, this is still active, or you can go into the actual PDI and make changes and then it will record as, okay, this has been visited and used. So it'll continue to be active as long as you uh, use it. The other thing I wanted to mention about these is that they will hibernate when they are idle and that's to save resources, compute resources, because there may be a lot of people that, that are out there that uh, have these um, personal developer instances and we want to make, and ServiceNow wants to make sure that the environment is um, as responsive as possible. So it's possible that you'll be in your personal developer instance one day and then you may come in hours later and you'll get a notification that uh, that your instance is hibernating. Just click on the, the access to the instance and it will wake itself and um, everything will be as it was before. So you won't lose data uh, or anything like that when it hibernates. It's just going to sleep for a bit until you tell it you're ready to, to use it again. So let's talk about how we actually go about getting one of these instances and then we'll walk through it. Uh, the ServiceNow Developer Program. So they have a developer program that you can sign up for. It's sim simple to register on the website uh, and they've got lots of resources in their developer program to allow you to learn about the platform sort of from a development perspective. So it's kind of like the Now Learning Portal that we've been working through on the ServiceNow Fundamentals course, except it's targeted for people that are actually going to be developing solutions on the ServiceNow platform. 
joining the program is free it's easy to do you can do it right from the website we're going to walk through it here in a minute and once you sign up as a member of the developer program you you will instantly get your very own personal developer instance of ServiceNow. if you happen to let your instance uh, go idle for 10 days and it gets reclaimed you will have the ability to go in and request another instance that's fine just know that if you had data or significant changes that you'd made in uh, in your old personal developer instance those will um, be gone when you request a new one so it's very important if you want to keep it active to go in there at least once every 10 days to make sure that it um, it continues to be active so the way you the way you join the developer program is you go to the home the ServiceNow homepage. Um, we're going to scroll down to the footer and choose the developer portal link and then we're simply going to sign up um, and then wait for it to tell us that the instance is ready so let's go ahead and do that now here we are at the service uh, service now homepage I'm going to scroll to the bottom I do this often because I just like to come to the homepage and use the footer as my uh, kind of jumping in point but from here you can see under the resources tab again there's the training and certification area where we've been spending most of our time we're not going to come down here to the developer portal area and click on that link this is where you're going to find lots of information about how to become a developer lots of tools lots of training uh, come here and look at this as much as you'd like but first we want to create uh, our own membership we haven't uh, registered yet as a developer so you can come right here to this button that says sign up and start building to register for the ServiceNow developer program in which case we'll just fill out the form fields here put your email address in and we'll create a password And let's enter this CAPTCHA thing, Y6W8F. Agree to the terms of use. I've already read them. So uh, if you want to read those, make sure you agree with that. And then click the sign up button. And thank you. And check your email link for activity to your account soon. So. Um, I'm going to pause the video at this point. It's probably working. It's setting up the instance now. We'll return in just a moment when I get the email that says that that's been completed. Okay, we're back. It's been less than maybe two minutes, and um, I'm now looking at my email, and I have received an email from ServiceNow um, saying that I recently registered for the ServiceNow developer program. I need to verify my email, so I'm going to do that now. Just click on the Verify Email button. My account is now active, so I can click the login uh, or the sign in button to go ahead and log back into the developer uh, program as now a member of that program. So I will do that. My email address, the password that I just entered. And they're going to ask us a few questions to help uh, sort of set up the environment. Um, do you code? Yes, I code. What describes your job responsibilities? Let's just say I am a developer and that I've agreed to the developer terms of use. I'm going to hit finish setup there. Processing our request, this will take only a few minutes. I'm going to pause the video and I'll be back as soon as they are finished with their processing. We're back. It's been about five minutes and um, during that time I've received a couple of additional emails from ServiceNow. One welcoming me to the developer program and letting me know uh, the benefits of being a member of their developer program. 
Uh, the other thing that has happened is the, the website has responded, letting me know that my instance is ready, uh, giving me my instance URL and my username and my password. I've gone ahead and, and uh, jotted down the username and password. And at this point, we can go ahead and we can check out our personal developer instance. Remember in the last lesson, we talked about the different user interface types. They offer three user, user interface types. Um, this is a slide from the last uh, the last video. So what they've provided with us with, with that URL is the URL to our now platform UI. So that's the one I mentioned in the previous video where we'll spend most of our time. It's the one where uh, most of the work gets done uh, in service now. So I will go back and I'm going to go ahead and access my personal developer instance now. And here we are. So this is our first real dive into the uh, user interface within uh, ServiceNow. So again, this is a fully functional instance. There are some limitations, of course. You can't um, you can't publish things to the repository, and there are certain plugins that you won't be able to to install. But this is a great uh, starting point for us to learn everything we need to know about ServiceNow, how it works, interacting with the user interface, what the different applications are. Um, so we'll be using this as we continue to go throughout the series of videos. Um, keep your instance active. Um, and as I do the demonstrations, I, I think it would be great if you could follow along in your instance uh, and uh, test out and practice everything that we're learning in this series of videos. I hope you were successful in following along and getting access to your own personal instance of ServiceNow. And I'm looking forward to putting it to use in our next video. We'll be jumping back into the ServiceNow Fundamentals Learning Path by completing Lesson 3, the ServiceNow User Interface Overview. Thanks for watching. Please provide feedback in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.